actually didn't have to look too far. They're exactly where they were earlier. But in this case now, we have two. Two heads have popped up and are soaking up the rain. And the more I think about it, the more alert, or the more I watch them, the more alert they seem. And I think, I don't, I can't quite decide what to do because at the moment we're in a good position to keep our equipment dry. But on the other hand, we're still quite far away. But the rain is coming in harder and harder and it, the skies are looking greyer up ahead. And I think that if they're going to hunt, that's the opportunity that they're going to seize with the sort of the height of the storm. And it's coming soon, Dave. I think we should move. I think we should move now. And actually, it might even put us in an even better position for this rain. We might not. The problem is, we might not be able to see them from down there at the road. But if they do go for the buffalo, we'll be in the perfect position. Okay, let's head on out. Now at any moment we could take off, given this, although the wind seems to have down, died down a bit. Dave, how are you doing at the back there? Are you getting, okay. You seem to be quite dry. But Jennifer, the sound of the rain on the roof is actually wonderful. It's a very soothing sound. And the nice thing about living in the Mara is that we're now in tents. And I, for one, have always loved living in a tent. I really enjoy the sound of the rain on canvas or rain on a roof, rather than it being muffled by a ceiling. So I agree completely. I love the sound of the rain. And the smell of the rain, actually. And the gentle drips flowing down the roof or down the side. cover up my monitor again. Okay. Sorry, Rebecca, you broke up a little bit there. What did you say? Sorry, Dave, I need your help. Okay. Well, we're just about to go around the corner. How's about this, Rebecca? How about we go and see if we can see the lions around the corner? I'm not too worried about the rain coming in at the moment. We seem to be okay. Oh, hello. Here we go. Now I can hear Rebecca perfectly. So as long as I hold the radio, it's fine. It just, hey, just can't rest in my lap for now. It's a great time to test out the vehicle's 4x4 abilities because I think it's going to get slushy very quickly here. Now this is a little secret waterhole that's just over here. It took me a while to realize it was here. Only when I, wa I looked down from the top of the mountain and saw it did I know that it was around. It's so well hidden. Gremlins General, I'm sure it does flood in the Mara. I'm sure the Mara River has flooded in the past. I'm, I imagine it happens quite regularly with flash floods. I'm not sure how serious the floods would be. I reckon they could be pretty serious. I know that there's an old crossing in the Mara River that we went to go and visit that has been completely washed away, an old concrete causeway. So I'm sure it does flood. Even where we are on the top of the mountain, and a couple of days ago, remember that time that Brent and I were driving back in the rain and Dave was filming from inside Chiku, tucked away safely from the water? Well, that time we arrived and crossed the bridge just after it flooded. There was still a bit of water on the top, but mostly there was lots and lots of debris. So it was clear that the river had come rushing down. Dave, there's a hippopotamus there. I didn't see that on our way up because I couldn't see that side of me. Okay, let's just go see if we can see these lions. 
gauge the distance between them and the buffalo and work out what they plan on doing. So there's the tree, there's a buffalo, they must be slightly further up the ridge because nobody seems to have stopped here, so it's obviously not a better view. Can't see, I can't peek around the corner, there's a buffalo right here, maybe the distance is, oh. Maybe the distances were quite deceptive. You see, let's just stop here for a second. Let's just pull off, pull off the road. Aha. So, oh, are you okay there, Dave? Yeah. When well, you're getting soaking. Here's a buffalo bull. And there's a tree that I was using as my marker where the lionesses were earlier. Uh, I don't see the lionesses. I think they might have been further from the tree than I realized. And perhaps a little bit further up the ridge. And that would explain why everybody was parked so far away from them. There's obviously not a clear view of them from down here. But I still think as this weather pulls in, if they're going to go anywhere, they're going to come towards the buffalo. But I definitely can't see the lions from here. They must be hidden. An old buffalo bull making his way to rejoin the rest of the herd. Got a little bit of a limp. But two lionesses on their own, and I think it is just the two of them. I doubt they're going to try and tackle a bull of his size. It is entirely possible. We know that lionesses can do it, but why do that when you can go for a tender buffalo calf and not face those scary horns? He doesn't look like a buffalo that's just walked past two lions. Do you think he missed them as well, Dave? He must have. The wind is howling, so he might not have smelt them not even have heard them. I'm going to lurk around here. I feel as though it's a good idea. You can see he's walking very stiffly. Can you see any injuries on him, Dave? I can't. But he doesn't look like he's walking easily. He's walking very, very slowly. Could be that he just tripped and sprained something, pulled a tendon, something on a rock. It is very rocky here. There's lots of holes. he goes to join the rest of the herd. Right, I'm going to cover us up a little bit. I can see the water is now really making its way in. So while we do that, James has been brave this afternoon and he's braving the smell of the decomposing hippopotamus.